without that alchemy not a nobody can work. For example, when you started from your house at 530 today, that's a work. You come into the path and then you go on the road. And then your wife asks, where are you going? I don't know. Wherever the winter takes me away. You don't say that. I want to reach the Yatnishara, isn't it? So you always are a path for the motive. A goal in mind. Man is a goal seeking animal. You all have a, whether you study, whether you get a job or a marry, there is always a goal in mind. And that goal has to be fulfilled. And for which you are working. But the, the truth is, we may work keeping a mindset and goal in mind, but that goal needs not be fulfilled. There is no guarantee that we will fulfill our goal. This is the problem. Because knowledge is limited, data is limited, power is limited. With this limited knowledge and power, we set certain goals in mind and we make our effort. And sometimes it can be fulfilled, sometimes it need not be fulfilled, sometimes we go beyond our expectation, sometimes we go below our expectation. Is it not true? You put some money in the stock market, because when you put the money in the stock market, the value is going up. Then the moment you put the money, the value went up. Then it, or you send your child to the college because he was a bright student. He goes to the college and becomes a drug addict. Or fall in love with some girl. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. This makes a lot of anxiety. It creates a lot of tension, anxiety. I cannot but work. I have certain goals in mind, but there is no guarantee I will fulfill all those goals. So between your work and the expectation, there is a lot of tension inside you. And that becomes pathology, stress, depression, conflict, sleeplessness, all those things. So the mental confusion becomes a pathological experience. And the number of hospitals are there. The number of hospitals are in there. One of my friends started a hospital and he called me to inaugurate. I inaugurated and I blessed him. After three years he called me, Swamiji, no patient in my hospital. What did you do? I said, I cannot pray for more patients because, in, because there is no patient, it's a success, isn't it? Your hospital is a success, there is no patient. You cannot pray for more patients. So because of this pathological problem, number of hospitals, GDP is increasing. But human happiness is different. Human well-being is different. So what should I do? So karma is a problem. Action is a problem. You know, the, in the Western tradition, what is the result of a curse? A curse by God. Go down to the earth and live by the structure they brought. It's a not supposed to be a curse. And we are living now. What seems to be a curse? All of us dream a state where we don't have to work, isn't it? I can sit quietly, sit cups of coffee, read the newspaper, put up my feet up, and then watch the TV. This our dream. I work for 30 years, 25 years, and then live quietly doing that. So this is the kind of dilemma we are living. We cannot work, we cannot but work. At the same time, work has to create an outcome. And we are not sure about the outcome. And our spiritual master says, Nishkama Karma. What is Nishkama Karma? Desireless work. Do your duty without any desire. But how can I do that? If there is no desire, I will not even get up from this chair. I have no desire. At the end of the program, I don't even get up. Why? I have no desire. The desire is what motivates you. To. The desireless work is only a chimera. That's not going to work. Desire motive. Even the heart of Brahman, there is a desire. 
What is the desire? Bhagus yam kaja, yehi, satabho tapyada, satabho tapyada, jadam karva matyada. The desire is there in the heart of consciousness. Desire is not the problem. And if somebody says, I have no desire, hmm. then you have to see what happens to him early 8.30 in the morning, breakfast desire. Next time, lunch desire. Dinner time, dinner desire. I see that desire also. Nobody can live without a desire. So this creates a lot of complex problems. The desire which motivates me to work, what it means I must have a goal to work. Otherwise, I must be just doing something meaningless. Man is a meaning-making machine. Human beings are a meaning-making machine. Everything you should have a meaning. Without that, you cannot ask. So desire to give, I have to work, and I have to set goals. And there is no guarantee that I will fulfill all my desires. I may not reach my goals. Then there is anxiety, there is tension. This is the situation now. How do we get out? Krishna says you cannot avoid work. So forget about avoiding work. The only thing you can do is, how can we? It's not freedom from work, but freedom in work. How can I make work as a means of exploring my potential? as I interact with the world. That's all what you can do. So Krishna proposed a change of attitude. So far, you have been working for yourself. It fattens your ear. Mother thumb, I work for myself. Or even if I don't work, even if I remain quiet, still there is an expectation. I am not doing anything. Still there is an expectation. Whether you work or not work, there is an expectation. I am not talking to you anymore. There is an expectation. If I talk to you, whether I am talking or not talking, there is an expectation. So Krishna says, at this point, we are working to fatten our own ego, fatten our own answer. Mother, change that ego. Instead of selfish, activity, make it altruistic activity, which seems to be very difficult, isn't it? We come to that. When you change your attitude towards work, altruistic activity means, I work for myself, but I include a few more people into my work. How is that? Means you do that. When you are unmarried, you are working for yourself, thinking for yourself. But when you are married, the scope expands, isn't it? My wife is in good. My children are in My in-laws are in In my pranati. So when we say altruistic work, what we mean is, you are working for your own self. But when you include a few more people, there is better chance of improving your own well-being. Because if you work alone, then your accomplishment will be limited. If you include a few more people, a few more ideas, create win-win situation, play positive some game. So Krishna says, yajnartha karmanunyatra. Offer your work to yajna. Make your work a yajna. This is a very interesting concept. Yajna we already know. What is yajna? You build a fire, sit around it, offer things, material, drabya, etc. Maybe to go good or some ghee or some puff the rice or cook the rice, you offer it to the fire, isn't it? And what do you say? Indraya, idam namama. I offer this to Indra, not for me. I offer this to Indra. Agnaya swaha, idam namama. The yajna means. You are offering something which you have to a higher purpose. Gods, 